Um, I want to uh, formally move the motion of uh, no confidence. Um, when Rebuilding Ireland was published in 2016, it had several uh, aims. Uh, addressing the homelessness crisis was its first aim, and homelessness stood at that time at 6,107 people, that included 2,206 children. As of this evening, belatedly announced figures for October, we now have 10,514 people classified as homeless, with 6,688 6, adults and 3,826 children in emergency accommodation. Bear in mind that these disgraceful figures do not take account of the many thousands of so-called hidden homeless. Those who are uh, back living uh, uh, with their parents or sleeping on a friend's couch, we come across them all the time. Two or three families under the one roof is actually not unusual. And the stress and tension that that causes is obvious to those who deal with the issue uh, on a constant basis. Of course, according to Fine Gael, the great magic bullet to solve all of this is Rebuilding Ireland, a document so marred in spin and ambiguous language that you'd need a translator to get the actual numbers. In 2016, the then Minister for Housing, Simon Coveney, promised to fix the homelessness and housing emergency in one fell swoop. He said he would, he'd stake his, his career on it. The then Taoiseach, Enda Kenny, said the goals were ambitious but achievable. Not only have this government not eradicated homelessness, but the situation has got far worse. The second stated aim of rebuilding Ireland was to improve the rental sector. Well, Minister, as we stand here tonight, we are currently in the 32nd quarter in a row where rents have risen. We are in a situation where the average rent in Dublin now stands 100% higher than it did in 2010. Indeed, in one part of Dublin, it's 125%. Those are figures not plucked out of thin air. They are all from quarter three daft.ie report. Another aim of rebuilding Ireland was to address the housing waiting lists, which well in excess of 100,000 individuals uh, and families on the list when Rebuilding Ireland was published. According to Rebuilding Ireland, HAP and RAS will deliver 58,560 housing solutions, now just housing solutions over a period 2018 to 2021. We keep pointing out that these are not new houses. So the question that, make, that must be asked is, what exactly are you rebuilding? Across all local authorities, the target for 2019 is to build 6,545 houses. It seeks to acquire 1,325 lease, 2,130. But the big number is HAP and the units to get to the target are 17,360. The HAP element of the plan in 2019 is expected to cost 423 million euros, with a further 80 million allocated in 2020, bringing the total spend on HAP in 2020 to over half a billion euro. The more this approach is pursued, the more difficult it is to roll back on it. HAP does not provide a secure, a secure form of housing, nor is it cost efficient. HAP is the single biggest transfer of public funds to private landlords in the history of the state and is being used to effectively confuse the numbers when you talk about units being delivered. The Public Accounts Committee, of which I am a member, did extensive work in trying to decode the Rebuilding Ireland spin. In the Public Accounts Committee's uh, sixth report published in July, um, the housing waiting list totaled 114,858. That, of course, includes uh, those on HAP. 114,000 includes individuals and families, which um, really represents an actual figure in the region of 330,000 people on, in need of housing or on waiting lists. So let's be clear, HAP is not units being delivered. It is people and families being put at the mercy of the private market and left to fend for themselves. It, means, uh, it is a means of massaging both the social housing waiting list numbers and the delivery of housing units. 
During the, the Public Accounts Committee hearings on housing, the Department of Housing, a Department of Housing official said, and I quote, HAP tends to provide for shorter leases. End of quote. The dread of the notice to quit is something that renters in general experience, but there is an extra complication for those on HAP because if, uh, it is extra difficult to find accommodation within the price range. And I've also raised the issue both at leaders' questions and in a topical question very recently about the administration of HAP, which is causing long de delays, which is making it even more difficult to secure accommodation. Minister, you apparently don't recall the Social Democrats ever table questions, amendments, legislation, or attending the Housing Committee. It's funny that because a simple fact check will reveal that you're wrong on all counts. The reality is that we've tabled hundreds of questions, repeatedly used leaders' questions and topical debates, brought forward a piece of legislation on rents that you yourself welcomed. But um, while at the, um, the facts get in the way of uh, spin, in this era of fake news, I would urge those in the media who have had a responsibility to report impartially to do just that. Let the facts speak for themselves. Some have been trotting out uh, government spin verbatim, and really, they really need to look to themselves. Whenever the general election happens, I can confidently predict housing will be a central issue. People have already made up their minds that the approach to housing is not working and it absolutely must change. Minister, we're only days away from yet another cold weather initiative being announced. This year, there will be even more people uh, than ever in need. We can only see, we can count the rows of tents in our parks, along the canal banks, so we can understand the level of need. And it's not a solution. Your business as usual approach, and it won't be solved overnight, dismissiveness has sought to normalise children missing developmental milestones uh, as they're stuck in unsuitable home, uh, uh, homeless accommodation. It sought to normalise two or three generations under one roof and ultimately sought to normalise a society without empathy or compassion. But, Minister, that is not who we are. Ireland have, our, our, Irish people have an inherent sense of decency and are appalled at the trauma we are inflicting on those who find themselves unable to keep pace with the property and, re rent, uh, and rental markets mm -hmm. that make no room for those on average uh, or below average incomes. And when Cuckoo fund bu co funds buy large blocks of houses or apartments, you tell us that it will provide housing. Well, what kind of communities are we building? Transient and even then only available to those who can afford them. Our use of public land is dictated by your department. You, you only have to look at the old Devonie Garden site and the Oscar Trainer site to see your approach. This should have been a major opportunity to deliver affordable housing for sale and for rent, but your approach is to have private developers who will want to make a healthy profit, which works against uh, de delivering uh, affordability. We need to focus on the state-based based approach to project management of the sites under public ownership to ensure the maximum use is delivered effectively and in an affordable way for both sale and for rent. The underlying philosophy of rebuilding Ireland is that the market is the solution. But the people I come across don't talk to me about getting on the property ladder. They talk to me about wanting a home. I hear parents ask where their children are going to live. I hear from their adult children who are embarrassed to still be depending on their parents. I hear from a whole generation of renters who are working hard but paying huge rents, and that means that they can't save for a house that they can call home. I hear from people with eviction notice who crave the security of a home. I can't tell you how often I've had people in my office in tears say the same words. I never thought homelessness was something that happens to people like us. The narrative has to change and affordability has to be central to housing delivery. That requires a vision and it's a vision that I don't believe either you or your Fine Gael, uh, government have. 
You have spent years saying uh, how there has been no money available and how things take time. This completely ignores the fact that as far back as 2012, the European Investment Bank was telling us that there was funding available for housing. There were also a myriad of other options put forward, but all rejected because they run counter to the government's determination to rely on the private market to deliver solutions to, pro to the problems that it, it itself creates. It hasn't and it won't. And the, the longer you fail to realise that, the worse the emergency becomes. We have rents running significantly above the monthly cost of a mortgage, and yet an entire generation is locked out of accessing those mortgages because they can't afford to save a deposit while trying to pay the rents. The solutions are there, Minister, and I know you appear to have, a memory, to have memory difficulties. Hopefully by now your memory will have been jogged enough to recall, to recall the many uh, pieces of opposition legislation that have been tabled on these issues. Perhaps you might also remember our call two years ago for a national rent freeze, something your own by-election candidate herself in Dublin Midwest said uh, she supported as she mounted a campaign about how her own party and you, her director of elections, were failing renters and failing to provide affordable homes for purchase. I'm glad that over the last three or four weeks during uh, the by-election campaign, Fianna Fáil have finally woken up to the scale of the housing crisis. Their words have been laudable over the past number of weeks. Michal Martin has repeatedly used leaders' questions to decry the state of affairs and excoriate you for failing in your job. Indeed, the two new Fianna Fáil deputies in the House this evening will no doubt have lambasted you uh, and your track record while on the stump these past few weeks. Yet, it would appear now that the words are, are really all hot air and Fianna Fáil will continue to do what they've done since the outset and it, at the outset of this silent partner arrangement. You've used Brexit as an excuse to dumb down the many pressing domestic issues, including the housing and homeless emergency. Yet, uh, not one of you wants to talk about this housing and homelessness, how this housing and homelessness emergency will make Brexit and the Brexit fallout uh, even worse for Ireland and for the individuals uh, stuck in this situation. Uh, how will companies uh, look at uh, this country where their employees can't afford to live and will consider their relo relocation prospects. Already we're hearing about people moving out, for example, of this city because they can't afford to live here. People with good jobs, with good education. The expat city ranking report in 2019 published today unfortunately ranks Dublin in the last place of 82 cities, with 86% of people surveyed saying that they found it difficult to get housing and 88% saying they did not find housing in Dublin affordable. You and your silent partners in Fianna Fáil want to pretend that this motion is reckless, that, um, that a general election so close to Christmas is ill-advised and political game-playing a stunt. Yet it seems nobody on those benches cares to recall a no confidence motion Fianna Fáil themselves tabled in Francis Fitzgerald when the heat got too much for them to bear back in 2017. That motion did not require a general election and neither does this. You know it, Fianna Fáil know it and most observers know it. But you will spin, you will obfuscate and you will attack. We make no apology uh, for tabling this motion and we won't be silenced by your age old attack is, as the best line of defence. We're using this opportunity, we get a very small number of opportunities on private members' business, but we're using this opportunity to do what is morally and politically right, and that is to acknowledge that you have utterly failed in your job and that we have no confidence in your ability uh, to solve this emergency. And for that re reason, reason, regardless of any of your election timing arguments, uh, we have no option but to say that we absolutely have no confidence in you and we will uh, not only um, seek this motion to be passed, but we are asking you for you to resign. Our society can no longer afford you. Indeed, our society can no longer afford Fine Gael. Thank you.